Welcome back to Sunless Skies. In the last episode, we explored a bit of the Blue Kingdom, mostly Sky Barnet, the hub port of this place, but also explored a little bit of it to find the Stone-Faced Court, which is where we need to go to get the anti-deceased status, which then should open up some doors. <laughs> we'll see what doors. Half ziggurat, half fortress, the court is where spirits go to face judgment before they meet their end. A meek little city has sprung up around it, almost by default. Oh, it says the White Well over here. So, like, the White Well, which is right here, is, like, part of the court, basically. Erd. A quietly frostbitten city that clings like a scab to the White Well. Masked dead wander its ice-sheathed streets, going wherever dead people go. A statue crumbles on every corner, subjecting passers-by to forbidding stone glares. At Erd's center looms the stone-faced court, where the dead are judged. A ziggurat wide as a mountain, as tall as a stack of castles. Erd's population are mostly waiting for permission to enter. Let's mingle in the crowds approaching the staircase. There are endless numbers of them. As you're making your way along a mean and narrow boulevard, you notice a weary spirit hurrying towards you. It clutches a jar containing its voice babbling frantically. Not far behind it are two dead bureaucrats, citing the spirit's violations of its status as one of the yoked. They're gaining on the spirit whose jar has now begun to sob hysterically. Ooh, help the spirit or walk on? Let's help them, help the weary spirit. It quivers behind its mask and the voice in the jar burbles beseechingly. Yeah, I got you. You play decoy for the spirit when a pair of dead bureaucrats appear, carrying a list of duties undone and burdens as yet unfilled. Or unlifted, rather. The spirit hides as you profess your ignorance, but the bureaucrats quickly tire of you. They find the spirit's name in their book and in so doing, compel it to emerge. The spirit watches you from behind its mask as it is led away backwards. Aw. No rest for the yoked. Sorry, I tried. They find the spirit's name in their book and in so doing, compel it to emerge. Is this like the true name sort of thing? Like a true name holds power? I'm oh, just looking at the shops, the rag and bone. A market for the cast-offs of the prisoners held in the well. Wait, there's prisoners in the well? Huh. The graven who run the stalls regard you with alternately bafflement and contempt. Sorry, I'm just watching, watching my cat on the bed, Gaby, try to just like burrow into a blanket that's all bundled up. They love to try burrowing into blankets with their head. It's so cute. Back to Erd. Let's seek entry to the stone-faced court. A queue of thousands of masked spirits stretches out from the gates and winds up and down a dozen streets through buildings and over rooftops. Most of the population of Erd, it seems, are holding a place in the tangled queue. You see spirits departing and rejoining, silently tapping each other in and out. No one pushes. No one cuts in. An unfathomable etiquette is at work. When you ask a spirit near the front how long they've been waiting, they just shrug. Ugh. A bit of a wait. A woman sits in a booth beside the gates. At least, you think she's a woman? The flesh above her collarbone has been carefully trimmed away, leaving a picked clean and perfectly bald skull with gemstones in its sockets. She grins more fixedly than one might expect, even from a skull. It's a bit of a wait, dear, says the unreasonably chirpy administrator. <laughs> Ask your litigator to intercede on your behalf. Never mind. Um, hmm. I can offer... Oh, Testament of Roses. I, based on the icon, I thought this was Immaculate Souls, but no, it just uses the icon. It's a Testament of Roses. 
or three casks of Navaratine gemstones. I do have that, I think, back in the bank. Just a pretty short jaunt over to the sky, Barnet, because this place is so small. But uh, let's ask my litigator to intercede. Your champion glides forward, smoothing, flattering, placating. The unreasonably chirpy administrator is used to flooding visitors with paperwork, not the other way around. The loquacitor slides form after form across her desk. Certificates of authenticity, notices of intent, requests, licenses, promissories. The administrator waves you through from somewhere behind the document mountain. Your entry permission lasts one month only, says the administrator, stamping a certificate and handing it to you. Well, that wasn't too hard. Enter. As you step inside the court, you're immediately accosted by another skull-headed gentleman, though his ivory is noticeably more worse for wear than the administrator's, yellowing, cracked, pitted with craters. The carious official glances irritably at its clipboard. An invisible, perfect, wonderful. An administrative nightmare was exactly what I needed at this juncture, in fact. He looks you over. Ah, <sighs> well, follow me, I suppose. I am your guide, welcome to the court, etc. <laughs> I like the I like the curious official. Also, I don't know what curious means. Not curious, but curious. Oh, curious like a dental carry, like a cavity. Um, it means of bone or teeth, decayed. Curious. The curious official. Let's follow them. Spirits are obliged to pretend that they can't see you, which could make for some excellent pranks if that were permitted, which it is not. Right, because I'm one of the invisible. They have to pretend that they can't see me? Okay. Your footsteps ring out as you walk through the labyrinthian corridors of the stone-faced court. The bleak stone catches the echo and magnifies it a hundredfold. Delightful, aren't they? mutters the official as you walk past a row of misshapen gargoyles. The court is vast and cold and almost entirely empty, unless you count the statues. Everywhere you look, there are statues, in varying states of decay. Oh, look at that portrait. Holy shit, that is cool. Gotta say, though, I don't like what's happening around the neck area. I don't like that. That looks real nasty but everything up is really cool. Trials take place in a grand chamber at the court's heart, dominated by a colossal basalt statue of a sphinx. Judges are distinguished not just by their horned crowns, but by the hoard of gemstones embedded in their skulls. So this is one of the judges. As you enter, the jeweled judge is deliberating atop her throne. A masked spirit stands in the docks before her, placidly awaiting its fate. Dead, mutters the official behind you. Dead, dead, dead. She's going to say dead. Look, it's obviously dead. Nothing to see here, just dead. Hurry up. Dead. Dead, pronounces the judge finally. <laughs> Ask the judge about the industrialist's lost love. Ah, try to find him. I doubt they tell me anything. Port report. Watch the trials. Submit your own soul for judgment. Oh my god, there's so much I can do. Okay. And don't I have that uh, salt? Uh, what was it the testament of salt that proves that I'm dead, even though I'm actually not? I wonder how that's going to play into this, if at all. Can I just show them that and they're like, yeah, you're dead. Let's, uh, before we start, like, asking people to do stuff, let's just observe. Write a board report. What is there to say about the city outside? The dead wait, the snow falls, the days pass. The court is where things happen. <laughs> I love the pun. A court report. You sit down with one of the skull-headed graven and ask her what she's heard about recent developments at the court. Two hours and three of your notebooks later, she's still talking about the recent doomed efforts at bureaucratic reform, which have inevitably made everything more complicated. 
Several put-upon mid-level administrators have cracked under the strain, regrown their faces, and fled the white well to try to enjoy life. She whispers the latter with a note of genuine bafflement. <laughs> I think I'm starting to see what they're doing here. As if it wasn't obvious before, I guess, but they've turned... Well, hmm. They've done a couple things. They've both turned death into just this, like, bureaucratic silliness? Almost like instead of a mystery, it's just a bureaucratic nightmare of garbage. But also at the same time, they're still mystery. Like, remember when you pass through the, the door of the dead or whatever it's called, uh, no one's allowed to talk about what happens after that. It's still the greatest mystery. So there's still mystery, but also just so much absurd bureaucracy around it. Also, regrown their faces? They're like, fuck this, I'm out of here. They get their faces back and they try to leave. Hmm. Let's watch the trials of the dead. Surely an interesting case will come along. Any moment now. For every trial, the routine is the same. The judge will bow deeply to the Sphinx statue behind her throne and beseech the watcher to lend her wisdom. A spirit will be brought forth and measured and prodded and weighed. The judge will declare it dead. Eventually a spirit is ushered forth whose case has unique complications. Oh, before I continue... I have the Testament of Salt, right? That proves that I'm dead. Also, the judge is bowing to a Sphinx statue. Remember in Sunless Seas? Um, I don't remember the exact name of the place, but it was something where I, I did this like trade run a lot really early on to this place that had... I, I want to say it had salt in the name. It had something to do with salt. And it also had a Sphinx statue. Sphinx and salt. That must be related to this, but I don't remember much about it. The spirit under trial is a man who dabbled with immortality when he was alive. He died in the end, but he didn't quite die all the way. The Watcher has declared you failed dead, says the judge. Your sentence is to be thrown into the white well. You will not die, of course, but nor will you return. Well, that sounds terrible. They failed at dying. Intercede on the failed dead's behalf. Oh man, that's really overstepping my bounds. Also, 27% chance of success, but fuck, let's try. He doesn't deserve this fate. You stand before the court and try to plea the failed dead's case, but you're met with a row of hostile stares. Immortality is the ultimate sin. The failed dead go in the well, says the widow. This is the way of things. She drags the failed dead away, ignoring his shrieking. God. Being thrown down the white well must be really bad if they're shrieking because of it. They call it a prison, right? Is the prison part just that, like, I don't know what the hell's down there, but I don't think we're talking jail cells. I think we're talking throw them in the well, they go down, and they just can't come back up. Because it's just, I don't know, it's always sucking down or something. It's something you can't return from. Probably. What does this take? Oh, one cask of Novartine gemstones. Glad I brought them. Mm. The judge will measure the quality of your soul, the power of your ideas, the texture of your terror. If you are judged worthy, you'll receive a testament of roses. But it will cost you a moment of inspiration. Hmm. Let's do it. Yeah, submit my own soul for judgment. The judge is unfathomably busy, but there are a few spots left unadorned on her sparkling skull. Watcher, calls the jeweled judge. Grant me your wisdom. Guide me to truth. As she bows her gem-encrusted head, a group of robed graven poke you and, and prod you and measure you with calipers. One waves a feathered wand over your head. Another burns incense beneath your nostrils and watches the smoke. A third peers intently into your ear. 
The Watcher has communicated its verdict, says the judge finally. The robed graven withdraw, skulls bowed. Away the verdict. Unlock this by not having soul flaws. 60 terror at most? Well, I got like 1% and a moment of inspiration. It worked! Found worthy. Your soul is of remarkable quality, says the judge kindly. Flawless. Sparkling with ideas. Some scar tissue. Enough to add the texture of wisdom. Not enough to twist it beyond recognition. I am more than happy to issue a testament of roses. Why, thank you. Can I just, like, keep doing that? Yeah, I guess you can keep doing that as long as you have casks. Of course, I don't exactly have unlimited inspiration. I want to save a good amount of those for Langley Hall, too. Let's ask the judge about the industrialist's lost love. You give her all the details the industrialist told you. Not too many details, unfortunately. It pained him to relay them. The judge peers at you. I have 72 more spirits to process before the end of the hour if I can hope to meet today's quota, she says. Do you really think I have time to pour over the records of all the spirits who passed through here and were declared dead? Hmm. Yeah, they love gemstones, so if I just should bring a bunch of gemstones here to offer a tithe. Make a demand with an indulgence? I don't have that. 21% chance to persuade her of your task's importance? <laughs> Let's do it. Somehow, despite the fact that her face is a gem-studded skull, she manages to project a decidedly skeptical air. That's not surprising. I can't help you, she says. I'm sorry. That's the end of it. Okay, nothing you can do with that. I guess I'll ask the official to formally declare me anti-deceased. You are currently invisible, but would prefer to be seen. If successful, this will change your status to anti-deceased, confirming to the Blue Kingdom that you are, lamentably, alive. The official sighs and pinches the spot where the bridge of his nose used to be. Always me, isn't it? Well, I suppose it will cause less trouble for us both in the long run. Before I can declare you anti-deceased, I must be satisfied you're committed to being dead one day, says the official. No dabbling in immortality, no living life to the fullest. You're just a shell of meat and juice patiently awaiting its end. The traditional way to do this is to stage yourself a premature funeral, a public demonstration of mortality. Then there's just some paperwork and you're officially living for death. Uh, yeah, wonderful. Sure. Invite mourners to my funeral? Uh, it says the cowled loquacitor could assist here. Force your crew to play the role of mourners? <laughs> Unfortunately, they'll have to believe you're really dead. This won't be good for their peace of mind. Oh, that's horrible. Spend lavishly on flowers and fireworks. Hundred sovereigns? That's not bad at all. Particularly heartfelt eulogy? Three sky stories? Hmm. Oh, yes. Before I actually do the funeral, if I do these other things, it can... Increase my funeral preparations, I think. Yeah, so let's do this. Um, a particularly heartfelt eulogy. Unusual for a eulogy to be delivered by its own subject, perhaps, but at least you can throw in some good anecdotes. And yeah, that increased my funeral preparations. You sit down and compose what turns out to be a particularly stirring eulogy, if you say so yourself. Shame you won't be around to do this for the real thing. Let's spend lavishly on flowers and fireworks. The official names a price. He'll take care of it, he assures you. The official counts your coins carefully, then flings them from the nearest window. What? <laughs> he catches your expression. 
Your money is useless here, he says defensively. The important thing is that it matters to you. Now that I know you've spent what seems like a vaguely appropriate amount, I can organize some suitable decorations on your behalf. Oh. I see. Well, I already have what I need to have an ostentatious funeral, so is there any point in getting more? I don't know, let's try this. You're not fussy as long as they can turn on the waterworks at the appropriate moments. Is the Cal Loquacitor going to help here? I don't see any particular way to like activate that. A miserable turnout. Unfortunately, the only available grievers are the Graven. They're technically alive, but far too busy with paperwork and the spirits of the dead, whom it seems chur um, whom it seems churlish to invite. You trawl the streets of Erd in the corridors of the court, but you don't manage to attract any interested mourners. Just plenty of silent glares and a few following shadows. Alright, treat myself to an ostentatious funeral. Now this, this is the death. A funeral to remember. The procession marches through Erd. Fireworks crackle overhead. Wreaths of flowers line the streets. The sheer spectacle is enough to attract a larger audience than expected. You sit up in your coffin, waving to your adoring mourners. Finally, you arrive at your grave. The carious official delivers last rites in a bored monotone. As you're lowered waving into the ground, you don't lie down until the first shovelful of soil hits you in the face. After a few anxious subterranean minutes, the carious official digs you up and hands you a bundle of documents to sign. A very moving, I thought, he says, wiping an imaginary tear from his eye socket. You'll make a fine corpse someday. Thanks. I'm now anti-deceased. I mean, I could just try to convince the judge again, right? But I feel like I shouldn't just keep doing that. Something bad must happen. I'll just annoy the shit out of them and they'll never want to help me. Let's go back outside. Actually, is there anything else to do here? I mean, this place is just the court. And I'm done with the court, so yeah, I guess there isn't anything else to do here. But what is this? They have a prospect? Did I... Do I have this prospect? I'm confused. Oh, yeah. And apparently I turned in four of them, but not the fifth one? I don't even remember doing that. Well, here, let's complete it. Wait, no. No, that's... I only turned in one out of four. I only was able to select one because that's all I had. Yeah, that makes more sense. Oh, caged catches. Yes, all of them. I'm scared to buy the Petrichor. I already have so many supplies. I don't need it. Dax's food. I don't know, buy one fuel, that's fine. Let's continue to explore. Um, yeah, there's this platform over here that I didn't go to. A speckle of cottages on the lip of a frozen well. Beware spiders. Okay. Oh, wrong way. Oh. Still don't want to fly over this creepy thing. Wellmouth, or well, let's just call it Wellmouth. A smattering of dark cottages at the White Well's edge. It's surrounded by endless rows of tumbled and broken statues, mere specks against the snow. 
well mouth. Howling winds erupt from the frozen abyss, rattling roofs and chasing snow over mist-shrouded streets. Most of the silhouettes in the snow are statues, cracked and mutilated by age. A few are not statues, but gaunt women in mourning veils, who skitter suddenly into motion as you come near and fall into silent line behind you. At the center of the village is a squat black cottage, its walls throb. Wow, they're really going all in with the, the spider imagery and words, huh? The gaunt women in morning veils skitter into motion as you come near, behind me. And there's a squat black cottage, like I'm thinking like a, a black widow kind of thing. Its walls throb. Yeah. Hmm. Deposit the psalmists. Oh, right! We got this quest, I don't even remember where, but like 20,000 million bajillion years ago. To deliver them to the White Well. Let's speak to the widows. These cadaverous figures are known as the widows at the well. Their role is to inter the failed dead. Oh, so they're responsible for throwing them down the well. You've attracted a half circle of veiled observers by now. They respond to your questions with whispers and hiss among themselves. You're in the wrong place, says one of them finally, stepping a little too close. She points to where the lights of Erd twinkle on the other side of the well. The stone-faced court is there. Grandmother will know you're here by now, says another of the widows. If you intend to stay, you must meet with her. Else, fly away at once. Okay. Well, let's do that then. Seek out the matronly relic's approval. She squats in a black cottage at the village's heart. Its walls bulge and pulsate oddly. The relict is an old woman of colossal stature, as tall and broad as a wagon. Her face such a mass of wrinkles that her features are almost entirely lost. She shuffles aside and gestures silently to an armchair beside a roaring fire. You ignore the insistent skitter-scratching coming from inside the walls as you enter her parlor. The relict collapses into an armchair opposite you, taking up her needles. They click her and clack, knitting together black threads that outstretch from the walls and ceiling and floor. Oh, they're making a web? <laughs> That's so cool. They're knitting a web. One of the widows pours you warm-ish tea, that kneels at the relic's side with her head bowed. Certain actions in the well mouth are only available to characters with the anti-deceased status. Well, that's me. Uh, yeah, I can only do this with the anti-deceased status and a selection of immaculate souls. Well, I'm pretty lucky I just got both those things. Otherwise, I would just have to leave. Request permission to linger. The relict pauses her weaving for a moment. A tithe of souls must first be paid, says the widow at her side. The relict grins, revealing why she has not spoken. The upper and lower rows of her butter-yellow teeth are fused together. She makes a soft clucking noise with her tongue and her attendant widow hurries to fetch some parchment. Oh, why are they fused? The old woman hunches, pen in hand, armchair groaning. Her handwriting is spiky, scratchy, almost incoherent. Almost. She writes three simple words. You may stay. As she finishes, the jagged scroll of ink lifts itself from the page, segments, and scatters for the shadows in a dozen scuttling black forms. Only the blank page remains. They write in spiders. Let's deposit the psalmists. The twice scorned priest and his flock have traveled a long, long way from New Winchester. Your crew can't wait to be rid of them. Thy mercy is good, deliver me. 
The psalmists emerge from your train, pulling coats tight against the wind. They form a bleak, snow-battered huddle. A few hurry to fetch the wood and tools they brought. Soon they've laid the foundation for a church. We can manage our own affairs for a while, the twice-scorned priest tells you. His nose and ears are already bitter red from the cold. Take these maps. We don't need them anymore. The church should be finished in two weeks. Visit us then. As you leave, you notice a line of widows assembled in the distance, watching wordlessly. Yeah. When I come back in two weeks, I don't think the church is going to be built. I had to give them some pretty serious stuff to get the permission to stay here. They're staying here without that and also just building on their land? Hmm. <laughs> Two unlicensed charts. Watch the widows inter one of the failed dead. A steady supply of immortals and quasi-immortals trickles from the stone-faced court. One is being dragged towards the edge now. The failed dead is a cadaverous figure in a three-piece suit, his skin tattooed with phrases in Sanskrit. The widows are dragging him to the edge of the well atop a rickety cart. Though shackled in heavy iron, he thrashes and writhes like a snake on hot coals. I can give you power, he shouts, voice carrying even above the wind. The widow's wagon nears the edge. Wealth, secrets, feasts, favors. I've lived a thousand years. I'm owed debts by gods. What do you want? The widows titter beneath their veils and tip him unceremoniously into the abyss. Jeez. Ask about changing my status? You are neither ephemera nor yoked. Do I want to change my status? I guess anti-deceased isn't exactly great. I don't think yoked is great either, though. That's terrible. Let's see what they say. One of the widows seems to fulfill the role of Wellmouth's archivist. She huddles alone in a library at the edge of the village, surrounded by crammed shelves, her floor obscured by a layer of damp, mangled books. When you ask her about changing your status, she scrabbles through the tome heap and retrieves, with triumph, a moldy journal. She flips to the relevant page. Centuries past, we employed something called a spider sweeper, she says. It was a role assigned to a yoked spirit, back when grandmother tolerated their presence. Perhaps ask her about it. Okay. Back to them. Oh, we can ask them a bunch of... Oh, we can ask them a bunch of things. Ask why the widows live here on the frozen edge. What exactly are the widows? Why have they isolated themselves so far from the stone-faced court? The widow looks shocked at your impertinence, but the relict reaches out with one massive hand and pinches her attendant's ear between finger and thumbnail. The widow squeals. We are here to inter the failed dead, mutters the window sulkily, rubbing her ear. The court sends us those who have failed to satisfactorily die, and we lay them to rest, usually against their will. And when we have no guests poking their noses in our business, we perform other duties, the widow smirks, ones that even the court don't know about. Oh, that just opened up something. Hide and spy on the widow's secret ceremony. 100% chance of success. I love my high veil skill. You've heard there are rites only enacted when the widows are alone. Your engine departs with orders to return tomorrow. The widows watch it leave, veiled faces upturned. In well-rehearsed unison, they make their way to the white well. You follow at a careful distance. They stand at the well's edge and raise their voices in chittering song. A seething shudder begins beneath your feet. In a hideous rush, darkness floods from the eyes and mouths of the broken statues around Wellmouth, or Wellmouth rather. It's spiders, spiders, 
a scrabbling black vastness, an arachnid ocean. They churn and blot the snow. They overcome you. They wrap you in a scurrying shroud. Eight million ancient eyes fix upon you. The rustling flood of spiders encircles the well and weaves immense gossamer displays at its rim. Whales, gardens, dragons, and castles, all manner of wonders rise and are devoured. The widows watch, hands clasped. You lie on your back, silk pinned. You can do nothing but stare at the sky and blink away the occasional inquisitive spider. As you stare up, you realize there's something wrong with the stars. The stars are writhing specks in a web that was the sky. Welcome to my parlor, said the spider to the sky, a purring voice in your head. Something has noticed you. Your brain feels like it's being hammered on an anvil. Beaten, yes, but also reshaped. The memories most precious to you are shuffled like cards. Old wounds tease open. Darkest fears are dragged out, writhing for inspection. Something is dancing inside your head, skittering excitedly from nook to crevice, but when you try to think what it might be, it scuttles into the shadows. You see struggling and let it do its terrible work. When you wake, the spiders and gossamer and widows are gone. You're alone in the snow, surrounded by silent statues, but not quite alone. Searing enigma. Something is wrapping your mind in silk. Oh boy. Oh, whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on, let me read this. Howling winds erupt from the frozen abyss, rattling roofs and chasing snow over mist-shrouded streets. Most of the silhouettes in the snow are statues, cracked and mutilated by age. A few are not statues, but gaunt women in mourning veils who scatter suddenly. In, yeah, that's the same, but soon I will shuck this place like a skin. That's new. Something is crawling uninvited through your mind. Actions in Wilmoth. Well, I'm just, ah, I'll say Wilmoth. Will increase terror. Get away from here. Duh. Hmm. I mean, I can take some terror. It, it explicitly says get away from here, but I only have 14% terror. Let's visit the relict. Hmm. Oh, we can offer to help the widows drive off the psalmists. Hmm. That'd be pretty funny. We help transport them here and then we help get them off. <laughs> Yeah, all right. The psalmists are encroaching on the widow's territory. You could help them rebuke the cursing priests. The silhouette shape hunches forward, one sharp leg embedding deeply into the floor beside you. We hunt without help, hisses the dark thing, its mouth parts mangling every word. The dark shape's legs dance in complex, intricate patterns as it resumes weaving. Okay. As rattled with spiders decreases, your terror increases. Hmm. Um. What is my current well ride? I don't. I could look for it in my stats. Actually, I can't right now. Hmm. This one, like if I gave up the one I have now, I could get this one. And this one increases my mirrors at the cost of your hearts and iron. No. No, I don't want that. This will enable you to change your status to yoked. The spider sweeper. Uncanny specimen. A testament of salt. Which I have. I don't want to do this. Right now. No. I feel like I should go everywhere as anti-deceased first and just see what I can do and then go to Yoked. Because I, th I think things will change a lot. Yeah, let's leave. And I think that's it. Oh, I can go to the church already. It's not done though, right? 
The church stands dark and forbidding at the edge of the well. Talk to the twice-scorned priest. The psalmists are busy raising a church while the window widows look on. The priest receives you in his half-built church. His congregation are hammering and sawing, but not him. He cannot work. As a show of devotion, he has been clutching a knife in one hand for decades. His fingers have withered lifelessly around the hilt. Oh. We left old Tom's well because we disagreed on the interpretation of a line of the psalm, he tells you. A schism, I suppose. But only because those fools were too stubborn to concede their point. Yet in the end, New Winchester wasn't right for us either. He glances out over the white well and scowls. This place suits our temperament. Okay, enjoy. Alright, let's get the hell out of here. Yeah, no shop or anything. We'll come back here later. Hmm. I guess for now, just go exploring. Um, hmm. Actually, maybe I want to do the court thing. What was it that I needed? I think a bunch of gems. Yeah, okay. I'm going to go back to the Sky Barnet. Grab a bunch of gems and see if we can learn more about the industrialist's uh, love. I guess I won't cut the way back. Just in case something happens and because this place is so strange and new. And it's pretty small, too. And I got this new weapon. And is so fun to use. Hmm. Do I want crew? I suppose, yeah. Perhaps one did not succumb to the star of madness. Um. Yeah, get a little bit of terror. Yeah, let's take them on board. It's only 5% terror. Not that big of a deal. Oh, hello. Shot missed. Sheaves of parchment. Vision of the heavens. Always hoping for that moment of inspiration. But that's pretty good too. Aw, oh, cry havoc. Come on, doggy. Let driver's cabin. Uh, steer the dog out by his goggles. It'll be fine.
Oh. I can plunder that. I thought that was something I needed to say. What are you? Spear for engine. That is incredibly cool looking. Oh my god, it's beautiful. Ooh, it's tracking. Oh, it tracks. Oh, that looks so cool. not even on fire yet. Ah. Yeah, that was a gorgeous ship. A spear for engines stopped. Spearophage, or the trade in souls, is ceaselessly prohibited in the Blue Kingdom. Nevertheless, spearfers flock here drawn by the quality and abundance of souls available in the kingdom. They will take lost spirits they can lead astray or ransack the soul troves locked in unplundered vaults. The engine is covered in gaudy pennants, brass gongs and copper bells, and a poorly grasped imitation of funeral customs intended to hoodwink kingdom officials. Hmm. As much as I want to always repair my hull, I'm really curious what they have. Probably just shit tons of souls. Yeah, let's loot it. It must rattle with stolen souls. 60% chance. Failure. Yay. Wow, and you still get something if you fail. You probably get immaculate souls if you succeed. The captain's cabin is poorly hidden behind an array of funerary hangings. Perhaps they hope to fool any officials that the engine might have encountered. Inside, you discover that he was partway through charting a course back to the transit relay. In his logs, the captain expresses disappointment with his hull. Looking at it, you can't help but agree. What is that? Okay, that thing was horrifying. It died really easily, surprisingly. Eater of the dead. Rancid horror with the elongated muzzle of a crocodile and the plumage of a peacock corpse, conjoined by a knot of bloated hippopotamus with many, many mournful eyes. The bane of the trespasser and the devourer of the dead. The powers of the Blue Kingdom tolerate them because they thin out the ranks of the unwanted dead. Claim a trophy, search its maw. That's all I can do. Hmm. Could use a terror reduction, that's for sure. And this might reduce terror. Let's search its maw, its maw though. I want to see what it has in it. Its jaw gapes, exposing waterfalls of noxious drool. It may have eaten something valuable. You'll have to climb in to find out. 65% chance. Success. Wow, just a jumble of undistinguished souls? That's not worth that much. A taste for Spearifer. 
three stokers hold the line of your sky suit as you plunge in. The smell is abhorrent, drawing your gaze to the rotting church steeples of its teeth. Between the sharp spindles of the teeth, you find the remnants of the eater's recent meals. Nestled, unchewed, between two black molars, you pry out a number of souls. Oh god. Whew. They move fast. Chomping, chomping, chomping. This time let's claim a trophy? Failure, but it reduced my terror. You go out with bone saw and malice and return with a clutch of bloody feathers, brilliant as the dawn, and an oozing eyeball black as an opal and large as a boiler. A chorus of ragged cheers goes up. You've tramped over something terrible and now dead. Hooray! I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode. So I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, we're going to see if there's anything else we can do at Sky Barnet. And then take all of my gems. I have seven of them. Nice. My barrels of gemstones and go back to the stone-faced court.